I'm going to show you the different variable types that we have in EcoStructure Machine Expert HVAC. First, let's start open and create a new project. I'm going to change the name of this one. Training. Okay, I'm in this dollar part. Now I'm going to create a new project here. We have opened the EcoStruction Machine Expert HVAC, the application. And in the first tab, we have configuration. In the configuration, we can define the local variables for the PLC. Let's define an analog input temperature, a digital input for enable, a digital output for cooling and a digital output for alarm. This is how you link your physical I.O. to a name, so you can use it later in your program. If we have remote I.O.s, we can define those variables in here. For example, I'm going to create an analog input temperature remote and I can define this an integer as an input, digital input enable, remote, it could be boolean, an input, and if I want digital output, alarm, remote, boolean, output, and the last one, digital output, cooling, remote. It must be boolean and output. Now let's take a look in BIOS parameter. Here we can find the BIOS parameter of the controller and we can define, for example, the analog input of the controller. Okay, we can change this. It should be configured in pairs. Okay, We can also make calibration. We can also define the mode bus. It can open. And also we can define the IP address of the controller. All the network we can configure here. I recommend you to define these variables before starting the project. Now. We have the EEPROM parameters and status variables. If you want to share variables over the network, we must define those variables in here because we can assign them an address. So let's create a few variables with the add button. I'm going to add a few variables trying to make a temperature controller. We can have the set point. I can define minimum and maximum value. And then I can define the asterisks. Then we need to define the variable type. In this case, I'm going to use real. That's why I start the name with R. It's real, 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 real. This column must be equal to this one. Okay. Later we're going to see what does it mean. Perfect. Now, in the minimum and max, we can link to another variable just like that. So we just link the variable set point to the minimum and max value that we want to put in here in the default value. In this case I'm going to use 
12 and 25 and default value will be 20. Then we have the possibility to make a scale and offset, define the unit and the format for these variables. Good. So just to validate, we need to compile, but we need to pay attention in here, the address. We know that the real size for each variable will be two words. So it will be overlapping here. Let's compile this. If we see here, there is an overlapping here. So one solution will be to select everything and press recalc to make it work. You can see here that the address has been changed. And if we compile again the project, there is no error here. What is important to define the variables in the EEPROM? The main reason is that the variables defined in here in the EEPROM do not lose the value when we remove the power supply. Okay, that's what's important to have in here, the configuration of some part of your machine. It doesn't happen the same when we define the variables in a status. The status variable lose the value when we remove the power supply. So it's important to define all the configuration in the EEPROM parameters and not in the status. The status will help you to indicate the behavior of your machine on your machine. So now we define in the status variables some variables in there. We can use the add button again and define this variable temp up an indication for an alarm I want the indication as a real variable and indication of the alarm as a boolean and I'm going to create another one as an integer indication a status. I'm going to use integer. I'm going to change the format for the real one. And now I'm going to select all the variables and press recalc. Now I'm going to show you some limits in the address. For these variables. Imagine that I'm going to use a new variable and I enter whatever I want here. We're going to receive a message that the address that you want to use is invalid. We have a specific range to use for this range to this one. I'm going to delete this one and show you now in the EEPROM parameter that we also have a limitation in here. So I'm going to use Another one. See, the EEPROM and the status are located in different areas, okay? And we have different space for both of them. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to show you now the enums, how to add them. Right click on enums, and then we can define a new enum. When that name this enum as a status and the enum will represent an integer value as a test. So let's imagine this. I got as zero stop, one is run and two fail. So we can link these variables to a string and I'm going to use it in here, in this one. So this is how we can use this. We need to select the enum status and you can see here that the full value has been changed. In this way, 
it's going to help us to easily read the code we when we are programming we need to compile this and then we need to go to programming now I'm going to show you how to use those variables in our program I'm going to create a new program here I have selected a structured test language and assign this to a task and then there is an easy way to use those variables we can simply drag and drop those variables into our program if we go to ax variables global share we can see three main groups epron status and io mapping here we can see our variables that we just defined in the configuration tab. We can simply drag and drop those variables into our code, just like this. In this way, we can work faster and avoid any mistake. Now I'm going to show you two more different variables type that we have. We have local and global variables. The local variables can only be used in the program that we that we are working with and we can drag and drop on it. And the global variables the global variables we can use them in the entire project so X bar global in this case I have used the X bar in the project example but if I want to use this variable in the main we're gonna see an error here Object not found, but if I use the X bar global, everything will be fine. So, to sum up, we have already seen. In the configuration the EPROM parameter and the status parameters these variables are oriented to the configuration of our machine okay the status are more oriented to indications okay and then we have the BIOS parameter these variables are going to help us to configure the PLC just like the analog inputs Ethernet communication, model communication, and so on. Then we have the IO mappings oriented to the IOs of the PLC, the ones that are embedded in our controller or are in the expansion. And then in the programming, we have the global ones and the locals.